My name is West Road Sal, and thank you for joining me in Night 5 of Ring of Honor Definitive Reviews. Tonight is the final night, but the excitement does not stop. We are taking a look at Ring of Honor Dissension, which was held on January 26, 2006 in Cleveland, Ohio. There's a Matt Sedol promo backstage to start things off. He's talking about his match tonight with Christopher Daniels, but he is not a good talker. Whatever he was trying to say was drowned out by the mechanical workings of his memorization coming out of his mouth. He has no personality. I'm sorry, Sadal, but past you needed to train a lot with promos. Then backstage, somewhere dark, somewhere closet-esque looking, there's a promo by the embassy. Prince Nana, Daisy, Alex Shelley, and Abyss makes an appearance at the end as their monster. Much more entertaining than the one before, the personalities presented really do make you curious how that is going to transition to the ring, in a good way. Your first match of the night is Jay Fury versus Adam Pearce. Fresh and new right off the scene, this is Jay Fury's first showing with the company, this weekend technically. The Code of Honor is shown here, but of course Adam Pierce beats down on Jay right after. No waiting, no patience. Jay does come back and things turn scrappy for a bit. There's dives to the outside, quick power bomb by Pierce. The crowd absolutely hates this man, yelling at him, and he yells back. Fury moves confidently and really well for a newcomer. Simple dive from the top rope, though, secures Pierce the win. A 2.5 out of 5. After the match, Pierce grabs a mic and a chair and props down in the middle of the ring, waiting for Cornette. Cornette comes out, and before he goes against what Pierce is saying, he hypes up the crowd for tonight's event. Before he can get into Pierce, though, Necro Butcher pops up in the crowd. Security goes for him, but he shows a ticket. Seems like CCW and an ROH feud. Cornette is getting all worked up. Fighting words are spewing out of his mouth. Necro goes for him, but he gets trampled by Cornette, Pierce, and so many other Ring of Honor stars. This brawl ends up through the entrance to the back. Cornette and Pierce end up making their way back to the ring and shake hands. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, it seems like here. Jimmy Yang, with his Matrix-esque gimmick versus Jay Lethal, is your second bout. Jay Lethal with the most obnoxious glasses, no handshake here, commentator seemed to skip over it as well. Jay Lethal mocks Jimmy Yang and does his pose himself, which gets the crowd heated. Jimmy Yang showing off some a good agility here. No matter what happens though, given the ferocity of the last segment, the crowd seems to be mellow for this one. Very good back and forth and chemistry between the two competitors though. Jay Lethal throws Jimmy Yang into the crowd for real once but then afterwards fakes out the front row twice, and they fall for it both times. There's a stiff belly-to-belly -belly right into the turnbuckle. Because of the adjustments, the, crowd's, the crowd gets back into it. It's notable how they both know to make use of the space in the ring. You can really see them working and calculating and making the most of the space they have. Top ropes corkscrew from Yang for the win. Three out of five. There's a promo from Loki of the Rottweilers next, but like Sadal's, I'll bet not as bad Loki gets over with his deep voice, but not his words. He needs more practice as well. Your next match is the Embassy, consisting of Rave, Shelly, and Abyss, versus Tom Tony Mamaluke, Sal Renaro, and Delirious. The heels enter, and the ring gets bombarded with toilet paper, odd choice of all things. The faces make their way out, and Renaro trips on the entrance ramp on the way out, and they try to make it into a thing, but you can tell that Delirious, for his um, being the most experienced, does get annoyed. Even through the mask, you can see it. Delirious is the sacrifice for building up the hot tag to his partners. Gets slaughtered by Abyss. A ref chief for all three of the ring, or for all three of the embassy to be in the ring to be down on him. Even Daisy Hayes gets a top rope dive onto him. Meanwhile, that's happening. Fan tries to get Prince Nana, 
with words, and Nan replies, Shut up, you fat pig. And the whole crowd, the whole crowd erupts in a roar of laughter. I marked out too. Then Delirious beats, the beat down on Delirious still goes on for a while. This gets a little tedious and boring. The hot tag doesn't really do anything because Delirious was in for a long time, yes, but at least he was selling his spots and his minute comebacks were something to cheer for. When all six come in and it breaks down, the match gets clunky to the point where sequencing is not right and they try to throw another wrench in the mix. Rave and Shelly are not getting along. A Saint pin by Mamaluke and Renaro get the win. A 3 out of 5. Loki versus Jack Evans. Loki and Jack Evans are in the ring and it's the beginning of the match. The crowd is chanting for Jack Evans to serve him again because he already did it once with his dancing and he goes for it, but Loki just kicks him and throws him mid dance move. Looking at the technique and style of the competitors, you don't think it's going to flow well, but surprisingly it does. Loki with the stiff knee kicks to the back and rams Evans into the guardrail outside. Double stomp by Loki gets the win. Even during the match, Evans did nothing though to make me think he was going to win. Compared to Loki, his strikes were so light and looked like they didn't hurt one bit. Even though it was very predictable, given the styles and the stiffness from both of the competitors, I gave this match a light, a hard 2.5 and a light 3. Claudio Castanoli and Ace Steel versus Nigel McGuinness and Chad Collier. The faces come out to a cheerful crowd. But then the heels come out, and Nigel wants this to be a pure wrestling match, instead of the debauchery we've seen so far. Cornette comes out and makes this anything goes instead. Both face heel matchups end up in the crowd early on, and they brawl around the audience. Weapons are brought into play, but no severe bleeding or visible injuries. One funny thing about this one is that the trope of accidentally hitting your partner is done multiple times. You don't usually see that happening twice or more in the same match. It looked like a botch and not something done on purpose, but Claudio trips on the guardrail coming back to the ring area. There's a suplex on the ramp that looks painful as well. The London Tower is executed, but the rope is grabbed by the faces for a two count. A little after that, the pin is granted to the heels with a pin that's really out of nowhere and abrupt. 3.5 out of 5. A promo by AJ Styles on Brian Danielson, then a promo by Brian Danielson on AJ Styles. These two can actually pull out some good talking, unlike what we saw in the beginning of the event. BJ Whitmer and Jimmy Jacobs with Lacey versus Austin Aries and Roderick Strong. Those are the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions at the time. Even before the bell rings, we can see that the issue with the heels is going to be that Jimmy Jacobs is in Crazy love with Lacey, protecting her and treating her right at all costs. Match starts and some nice chops from Strong. Standard back and forth, but does this but this does turn into a wrestling match like Nigel wanted his match to be. Jimmy Jacobs gets distracted multiple times, and this gets the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions the win. This was more of a story-based event, so to speak than a wrestling match, even though B.J. Whitmer brought the wrestling technical style to the floor. 2.5 out of 5, I give it. After the match, we see a frustrated B.J. Whitmer lash out on Jimmy Jacobs with a brain buster. Your second to last match of the night, your semi-main event, is Matt Sedol versus Christopher Daniels. He can wrestle better than he talks. You can literally see who's going to win this match by entrance alone. Matt Sedal comes in with music, catering to the crowd. On the other end, Daniels comes in with fog shooting up, a manager, a cloak, and glasses. Stupid mistake, Ring of Honor. Early on in the match, Daniels slides out of the ring and has to regroup. Random, but he takes a phone that a fan in the front row is currently talking into, says something, into it, and then shuts it off. 
Maybe it was a shoot. Maybe it wasn't. But it, it was it was just odd. Maybe Daniels was just annoyed that somebody in the front row, during his entrance and during like the first moments of his match, was on the phone. <laughs> Daniels goes out to the floor to regroup about three or four times, usual heel tactics. I'm not sure if me being annoyed was at the character or the fact that the writers told him to do this. When things start to finally heat up, stiff stri strikes for a while ensue, and really good acrobatics here as well. Sadal, for the most part, is thrown around. He looks like a ragdoll brought to life. Even though he does make a comeback, and kicks Daniels when he goes for a drop kick off the top rope, which looks promising in his favor, Daniels does get the win. Does get the win. Remember, the entrances. 3.5 out of 5. A promo on the rent return of the Briscoe Brothers coming soon. Nothing special, your standard linear segment. Your main event is Brian Danielson, your current Ring of Honor and Full Impact Pro champion versus AJ Styles. Now, Full Impact Pro at the time, if I do remember correctly, was like Ring of Honor's like sister promotion. This match does start off with the Code of Honor, and there's rough, rough, excuse me, rough, but precise mat work. Styles is taking Danielson off his feet. Danielson, impressed by what Styles can do, offers a second handshake. But instead, gets his hand spit at. There's more spitting, and the mat work gets real gritty and dirty, with both both men angered. Brian is a heel here, and he can pull it off. Quick back and forth, cartwheel reversal from AJ. Danielson is very cocky, baiting AJ, and ends up giving the finger to the crowd. Leaping forearm strike, stiff drop kicks, holds galore. Danielson begs for a timeout, but that was a ruse just to get AJ near him. Danielson apply holds with nasty, nasty torque. Styles' nose ends up bleeding from the strikes and submissions. AJ comes back with an inverted DDT, but Danielson, through his techniques and maneuvers, including a cattle mutilation, secures the victory. Easily match of the night compared to what else we got. I give it a 4 out of 5. To round things off, we get a handshake smeared in spit, once again, from both competitors. After the match, we are hounded with promos at the end of this event. We have four of them, to be precise. The first one is from BJ Whitmer and Lacey talking about tonight's events with Jimmy Jacob. A Sadal Aries promo there in Generation Next. Sadal is still bad. Aries is much better. We have a Full Impact Pro advertisement. I think they were the system promotion at the time, like I said. And finally, we have an advertisement for straight shooting, which was a an interview series brought to you by Ring of Honor, which gave you the likes of Paul Bearer, Bruno Sammartino, I think Raven. There was a lot of people in that series, but this was a good event. The only thing was it the 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 event as a whole took a good time to get rolling. All the matches except for like the two last ones on the card. Um, Daniels versus Sadal, and Daniels, excuse me, Sadal versus Daniels, and then Brian Danielson versus AJ Styles. The rest were, I hate to say it, but when compared to the other Ring of Honor DVDs that I watched, they were forgettable. The last two matches were what you need to watch. That's it. Anyways, thank you for watching. That is my last and final thank you for listening that is my last and final definitive ring of honor review i have a few more ring of honor and other assorted wrestling dvds that i can review but those are going to take time because besides these events i have just superstar and other assorted compilations so that might take a little bit thank you for listening have a nice day